Hello guys and welcome back for my yearly study revision tips video. I did a little bit of a study with me video last week which I'll link in the description box below if you want to watch that but today I am back with some more tips and for the first time ever on my channel I'm doing a giveaway. I'll be getting onto the giveaway at the end of the video but it's not just books it's more of a survival kit. <laughs> As always, I'm going to leave all the important links to everything in the description box below. The thing I always get asked the most is how do I make my notes look so pretty? That is a lovely compliment and I do pride myself in my note taking and things. On the screen now, I will have a cutaway of all the different types of banners that I use. Banners are so important for me because I use them for the titles of each case study or each subtopic. And so anytime I'm trying to remember something about that, I can always remember the banner that it's in as all the banners I try to do are different. Also on the screen, I will put some of the fonts that I like to use. The bulk of the text will not be in the font, that'll just be my normal handwriting. Um, otherwise, I probably find it too hard to read. Another thing I like to do with all of my subjects is to put the key facts and figures and definitions in red. So in every single subject, in all of my mind maps, the key dates of when things were created or started will all be in bold. The fiscal deficit will be in red. All the numbers are in red, so as soon as I look at my mind map or at that page, they just jump out and I can remember whereabouts those numbers are on the page. Why I like specifications is because they'll have the perfect definitions for all the things that you need to know. With economics and geography, definitions are so important. And if you're doing maths and decision maths, then definitions are really important then. Um, but also on the specification, they'll have subheadings and topics. So you can tick off them once you've done it. So you know that you've covered everything in the whole of the course. So once you've got the bare bones of everything that you need to study, you can then also create a revision timeline. With a revision timeline, you don't have to create a timetable, which is where you have slots, and that can be quite hard to stick to, I know personally. I'd also spend longer making them than I would actually doing them. But with a timeline, I might be like, by the 12th of May, I want to have all of my notes done. Then that gives me the rest of the time to then learn the notes and get it thoroughly in my head. And along your timeline, you can have many centuries of like 10 days or something, and you want to achieve a certain goal on that. Once you've done it, you can tick it off. Physics and Maths Tutor is my lifesaver. It has the past papers from 2005, from June and January for maths, all the core modules, all the mechanics modules, statistics, further maths, everything. It's not just A-level science and maths on there, it's also GCSE, but not only that, they have geography and economics. So it pretty much is my life, that website. Also for economics, I would definitely recommend tutor to you They have a website, but they also have revision playlists, which I will link in the description box below. Without the My GCSE Science Guide on YouTube, I would not have done as well as I did in my GCSEs. But what I like to do is if you put him on times 1.5 speed, you get through them a lot quicker. It saves a lot of time, you get to watch more. At normal speed, they can be a little bit boring and a little bit tedious, but if you speed it up a little bit, it just makes it a bit more bearable. <laughs> For maths past papers, I have created this timeline. It is all the C3 past papers from 2005, June, up until 2016, the C3, C4, January international paper. I have the title of them, I have if I've started them and completed them and marked them, and I'll put my grade, and then if I need to retry it again because I got a really bad mark the first time, then I can put that next to it. I also mark the questions that I either couldn't do at the time or that I found really hard, or that I got no marks on that I should go back and look at. I'm the kind of person that likes to make to-do lists and then tick them off, so ticking off past papers is such a satisfying feeling and I feel really accomplished afterwards. But basically it's really handy that I know if there are any last minute things I want to go over then I can just quickly go to these questions on these papers and just test myself, rather than doing the stuff that I know I'm secure on. If you watched my study with me video last week, you would have seen me make that huge 
A1 mind map of my geography coursework pre-release stuff. I would highly recommend this to any subjects which need case studies or any theory learning with models or something like that. I know a lot of my geography class are now doing that and some people in English are doing that for their stories and their poems and their books and things. I was fortunate enough to have a friend who owns a piece of paper worth the size of 16 A4 pieces. But what I used to do last year before I had this abundant supply of paper was I would sell a tape three or four pieces of A4 paper together to make A3 or A2 and then just make my mind maps like that. I find it makes it a lot more digestible rather than having a thick wadge of paper to have it all on one thin piece that's just wide. You also can then see the whole thing so when you're in the exam you can like zoom in on parts of the map if that makes sense. I know in A level and now in the new GCSE you have to do synoptic links which means that from one topic you have to link to another so you need to know like a broad spectrum and how you can link them so having it all on one piece of paper is a lot more useful and visual. The next tip is something I've never told anybody because I'm worried that you might judge me a little bit but it is definitely one of the most effective ways to study. This might look like your average chemistry book but no it's actually my geography book. If I was to bring this into school, my friends probably wouldn't even recognise that it's my handwriting. What I do is I write down questions. For this one, define long-term migration. An example of forced migration. Reasons for migration into Europe. I will get these questions from the headings of my notes. I will then read my notes solidly for about half an hour. And then I will put on a half an hour timer and I will try and write and recall everything I've read and written as fast as I can. So when I'm also studying it, I'm repeating it to myself constantly with like movements and stuff. So I'm trying to remember it. I do that again and again and again. So it's just pages of really horrible, horrible writing. But I did find that, that was really good for exam technique because not only are you asking yourself questions, but you're also getting used to writing quickly because when you're in the exam, you're under time pressure. So on this page, one of my questions was pros of build green. That means the pros of building greenfield sites. And then I did five lines, which means that I know when I'm writing my answers that there are five things I need to put in there. And if I leave one blank, then, then I haven't done my job. The nice thing with this is that I don't have to make my notes neat. It's weird, I have the super neat ones and then I have this mess. This is the mess I've never showed anybody, so please don't be mean about my handwriting. <laughs> the main reason I used to do that was because I didn't have any study friends or study buddies to ask me questions. Another thing I used to do when I didn't have friends was uh, record myself asking myself questions. I found this especially useful for languages where I'd ask myself a question in that language, leave a gap or a pause where I would then reply or I would actually reply but with the perfect response so that I could speak along with myself. I would replay it over and over again so that I could perfect it. Also, it meant at night time I could just play it and listen to it while I sleep. It sounds quite crazy and a little bit OTT but it definitely helps. In the morning you wake up and you can remember it so easily. I remember once when I was in the gym, it was just before I had a test in class. So I put my revision notes on the screen of the gym to, you know, where they have like your speed and your calories and all that. I would put that on there and I'd read that instead, but I was going a bit slower than normal. But it meant that because you're moving, you're getting more oxygen to your brain, um, you're recalling a lot more facts. You don't actually have to go to the gym. Something I used to do last year was I would just run up and down my corridor upstairs um, and just chant facts at myself or skip or something or just dance for a little while but while singing my facts. However, it's not just being active while you're studying that helps, but also in your breaks. Meditation and yoga both let your brain relax and calm and take a break after sucking in all that information. It can then process it while you're just chilling. I was receiving quite a few Instagram DMs from you guys who were worried about their new GCSEs because of this new reform that you're not so sure about what to do and how to revise. Well, I would definitely recommend these. 
I know with the new GCSEs, instead of being A star to an F, it's now one to nine. Scholastic is a company that contacted me that produce these revision guides for the new GCSEs. So they have them for biology, chemistry, math, high math, English language, and English literature. Something that I like about the written books, so the CPG ones and also the scholastic ones, is that they have really good definitions or glossary at the end. They also have work it exercises at the end of each topic so that you can test yourself to see if you actually understood what you've just read. It's also quite nice in the fact that it's bright and colourful so it's easy to picture it in your brain and then you can highlight over the top and annotate it if you need to. When I'm studying from books I really like to use the post-it tags so you can have little topics and subheadings or something that's like please come back to me or read me again or super important part so you can open that page really easily onto the bit that you need. Also the work it question sections have been written by examiners and exam experts so they're going to be quite similar to the questions that are going to come up in the exam. Along with the revision guide there is also an app which I found really useful it's a really good app it's the GCSE 9 to 1 Scholastic. You can add your subjects and they have all the different types of exam boards. You have your timetable at the top and they already know the dates of your exams on here. So if you take Edexcel Further Maths, it says, are you taking your exam on Thursday the 25th of May 2017? And then if that's the correct date, then you can put that into your calendar and you have it there already. Bit scary, but it's super useful. When you pick up one of these scholastic revision guides, you get this little brochure right at the back. It has a revision map, the road to success. It has some really good tips about remembering information, um, reading the question carefully. For high mark questions, spend time planning your answers. That is a great tip. Another tip they have is to snap it. Use your phone to take pictures of your revision material so you can revise on the go. That is something good, so you can always swipe through your photos of your revision notes if you're on the bus or waiting for a bus or if you're just hanging around on your phone rather than pretending to text someone when you're feeling awkward, you could actually be revising. So finally, that brings me on to the giveaway. Now, there isn't just gonna be one winner, there's gonna be three winners, so the main winner and then two runners up. <laughs> Scholastic has kindly agreed that they put some of their revision guides into the survival kit. So the winner will be getting an AQA English, Edexcel Higher Maths, AQA Biology and Chemistry Revision Guide. Now in the survival kit here, we have two books lying about last summer, You Can't Hide the Truth Forever by Sue Woolman, as well as The Museum of Heartbreak by Meg Leder. This one is apparently a Zoella book club pick, but reading the blurb of this book, it looks like quite a sad book, uh, as her sister died from a tragic accident and she's now looking for an escape from reality. So there's a bit of hope in there, just like there should be hope in Eurovision. The other one is about Penelope, who's 16, who's never been in love. This one is also about first love, friendship and growing up, which is the extra pressure that is put on you at this age on top of exams. So. Hopefully you will enjoy reading some fun books like that. Also in the box, covered in lots and lots of star sequins, we have the Simply Brilliant Stuff Notebook. This is the kind of book that I would use to write my quick responses. Also, this book has pages where you can just tear it out from the hinge like lightly, kind of like the post-its you can just tear off. In my last study video, I had a whole section on food and drink, which can help your studying. Um, and in it, I spoke about lemongrass tea and green tea. They're both naturally free from caffeine, which is perfect for me because I can't have caffeine or I'll be jittery and I can't really study too much if my hand is shaking. Green tea is also great for your skin and your general well-being whereas the chamomile and lemongrass infusion will be really good for relaxing as well so at the end of a day of revision if you're finding it hard to go to sleep and you need to unwind then definitely brew a mug of this for five minutes at 100 celsius and that is apparently the optimum brewing time and temperature in that video, I also spoke about chocolate. So when you're doing so much hard work, you do need a little bit of a pick-me-up now and then. So we have the green and blacks, milk chocolate, the sea salt one, and the white chocolate. Within the pile of confetti, we also have a pack of pens. These ones are the stapler pens, not the fibre tip or the thin tip ones. I've realised if you get your revision notes wet and you're using felt tip pens, it smudges. Whereas if you use biro colours, 
it doesn't. Included in the revision must-haves is the sticky notes. So these are the kind of things I was talking about when you want to bookmark certain pages in textbooks and revision guides. They're also brightly coloured, so they're meant to make you happy at the same time. And finally, we have the I Love Cherry Almond Sparkle Bath and Shower Cream. Because after constantly studying for hours on end every day, you want to relax in a bath of bubbles and enjoy your chocolate and a cup of tea and read a book while you're just sitting there. Mental health is very important, especially around exam time. So making sure that you're winding down after a long day and not just keep on going because otherwise it will come to a point where you will just crack, 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 crack. Crack, crack. So if you want to be in with a chance to win that study survival kit, all you need to do is give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more videos, and comment down below what your study essential item is. It could be anything, just let me know and I will be picking somebody at random to win the survival kit. However, we do have two runners up. Both the runners up will have the chance to win the AQA English and the Edexcel Higher Maths Revision Guide. But even if you don't do GCSEs, but you know somebody who does, you can still enter and feel free to, you know, keep the chocolate and share the stationery between you perhaps. But um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for weekly videos on this channel every Thursday, and I will see you next week. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Good luck. I will be randomly picking three winners and I will be messaging you here on YouTube through the YouTube messenger part. I'll be letting the winners know within a couple of weeks so make sure you're checking your messages section on YouTube.